September 20th, and we've got a hell of a lot of stuff to talk about. I know, so the world keep is watching. Ending. Right? The world Oi. is ending. Lightworkers are those who volunteer before birth to help the planet and its population heal from the effects of fear. Each lightworker is here for a sacred purpose. Very often, however, life on Earth with its material focus creates a form of amnesia in a lightworker. They then forget their divine and perfect identities and also their abilities to miraculously help the Earth and all living creatures. When lightworkers forget their true identity and purpose, they feel lost and afraid. I am that lightworker. I've been having this dream about a man named Ananias and his wife, Ema. Clearly, you've buried something deep inside of you that's trying to resurface. Oh, hi. Were you okay? I have dreamed of this for so long, of, like, you know, how you would look and... Get some sleep. <laughs> but there are things that we need to discuss, Ananias. Since meeting her, I know words and languages that haven't been spoken in over 2,000 years. I know mathematical equations that have never been taught to me, but somehow I know like it's second nature. Maybe this is all happening to me because I'm supposed to fulfill some kind of higher calling. I am in your mind. I'm in your heart. I am a part of you. So for those of you who roll with us on our Facebook page, New Release Wednesday, you may have seen an article that was posted that basically shares what's been going on at Rose City Comic Con. They recently have stated that they are banning all costumes that are related to Nazis to include Red Skull and Hydra, Hydra and a lot of that. And there's been a little bit of backlash from some people, but I think overall, at least from what I've seen, there's been a lot of overwhelming support for this based off of the climate that we have in today's society, mm -hmm. what we are seeing out there in the real world, and you know, ensuring that conventions are a safe place for all of us, not just for some of us. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's one of those fine lines you have to deal with when people are, are, you co are cosplayers coming in to cosplay Hydra because they want to be a villain, or are they coming in dressing up as a Nazi gear to do something else? So you have that, what was, what's the reasoning of that cosplay for that particular, and I believe the article had said, um, old school Hydra. Mm -hmm. And if you look at old school Hydra, old school Hydra is very Nazi attire. Yep, just so. with a different symbol on the sleeve. Yeah, so. So. yeah I mean, and, and to be perfectly honest, um, uh, I have friends who are of the Jewish faith. Uh, my friend Kate, for example, who um, I will share because she has posted and overwhelming support for keeping these sorts of things out of conventions. My friend Baltimore Lauren, God bless her, love her to death. Also, big fan of Punch and the Nazis. Don't show up at a convention uh, in Nazi attire. In this day and age, honestly, it's just not okay. When yeah. you have to question what somebody's motives are when you look at their costume, why are you doing this? It really, to me, just sort of sends the message that you probably shouldn't have done this in the first place. Well, and like, uh, what was this last year? We had that group, um, that those those despicable, despicable human beings who came in as the uh, t Twin Towers, as Fuck them. they cosplayed them, I as saw the planes them. were heading. Fuck them. And literally, I, I, I wished upon <gasps> evil things upon that person, those people. And I just, cosplay is about love and it's about community. And you get to cosplay things that bring joy to people. You could be a yeah. villain, but I get a lot of joy from villains. But right. now with everything we're dealing with, we literally have uh, neo-Nazis walking the streets. We literally have this issue now in 2017 where maybe it's time to kind of pull yeah. back on all. Nobody's saying you can't be like just Red Skull. Just don't wear the Nazi attire with red skull kind of yeah, a thing. Yeah, you don't don't make people question their safety. Don't make people question your motives. It's just not okay. It it, it really isn't. Mm -hmm. And I I say this as a cosplayer. I say this as somebody who's been costuming for years now. Um, I have seen people come 
in tactful mm -hmm. red skull attire, but that was at a different place in, in, in life. I mean, we weren't dealing with the same things as openly as we are now. Yeah. I'm not saying they weren't there because we all know they were, but it wasn't as open. Yeah. And the people that I know that have portrayed these characters in the past have voluntarily retired them because they understand that this is just not appropriate anymore. If you want to be a villain, pick something else. There are a plethora of villains out there that you can choose from. In fact, if you Google, I'm sure you can find, oh, thousands. Mm. Anything else. I mean, to, to pick this one style, this one sort of character, this one group of people shows small-mindedness, and it really just sort of is a thumb in the wound just digging in yeah. for people who are having to deal with this sort of shit in real life. Right. It is not okay. Yeah, so guys, like we said before in the beginning, we um, have the article up on our website and Facebook page, so click on there. We would love to hear what you have to think too because mm -hmm. there is pretty, it's pretty divided on the feelings. So let us know yeah. how you feel about the fact that this is getting banned. All right. All right, everyone, so I'm gonna give you my top three picks. Number one, we're gonna talk about Samurai Jack. Samurai Jack has a new comic coming out called Quantum Jack. So if you've watched the series like I did, the original, you're like, Samurai Jack was your life. Well, then they had the final season and I, for one, have a lot of issues with the way they handled the time jump stuff because I love time. So I'm a little irritated by the ending of the series, but that's just my personal issues. That's fine. So the comic book is actually, um, it's called Quantum, like Jack, but it's very much like Quantum Leap. So instead of going back and forth in time like Jack is used to doing, he's actually going in between alternate realities. So he's kind of been thrown in this quantum like juice and it's affected him. So he's kind of, the art, I don't know, it's just kind of, the art form even shows like a wonky kind of like psychological um, screw up of uh, Jack and it's it looks really interesting. So I'm still a little jaded on the series, but I it was beautiful I love I love Phil Lamar. I loved Everything that the art form, but I, I wasn't really happy with the ending because I like happy endings and I didn't get what I wanted Next comic so because I'll just keep talking about that so if you remember the series, it's Over the Garden Wall. So Over the Garden Wall was probably one of the most unexpected series that I saw that I actually was like, I must watch more, and I binged it. But it's about two brothers go over this wall, a garden wall, and end up in a really crazy, like, I don't know, world where there's talking pumpkins and people dying, and it just really messes with your head. Well, now we have a comic that's kind of giving you three story arcs with the exact same vibe of the series. So if you watch the series, this is something definitely to jump into and, and to read. But if you haven't seen the series, it, you're getting the exact same vibe. Um, the art form is a very, very similar, if not exact, that you, it'll make you curious to watch the TV show. So there's, again, three story arcs. So it's kind of like how... The, like the Adventure Time comics work where you'll be reading something and a few chapters later it'll have a different story. Um, it's different than the series, but um, I think that, I think people who love the series and who just love this kind of creepiness, uh, I believe somebody called it um, psychological um, creeptastic. That's, uh, um, I read one of the reviews on it, I thought that was kind of cool. So now we talked about Adventure Time, let's get to the third one. So everyone knows I love Adventure Time and I talked before about Adventure Time and regular show. But Adventure Time number 15 is coming out, and that has four star story arcs um, in the previous uh, comic. It had four, and this one kind of goes into, if you know the character, um, BMO. BMO is trying to get a better body and working with Princess Bubblegum, um, who just had a his birthday party. And she's trying to fight this, like, these monsters. It's, I just really love the series. So I, I love how it's... I don't know, you know, Jack's fighting the Goblin King and they're going to do a thumb war and it's just so stupid. I can read it like at lunch break and kind of feel like it's like an innocent read. And I, I love innocent reads because it, there's so much going on now where I can, I don't sit there and worry about blood and guts. And, you know, you're dealing with Princess Bubblegum and her friends trying to throw birthday parties kind of a thing. I, I, I enjoy that. So those are my three top picks. So let me know if you read them. Let me know what you think. Oh my gosh, guys. So this week, 
news has come out that Toys R Us might be in a little bit of trouble. Mm. News is breaking. They are filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Bankruptcy, man. Now, that does not mean that they're necessarily going out of business, but that does mean that there's going to be a lot of shakeups and a lot of changes that are going to happen if the franchise is going to continue. Right. I mean, we all have seen this through some of our favorite bookshops like Borders, like things go bankrupt and they're gone forever, but Toys R Us, nah, it's going bankrupt, but there may still be hope to bring it back. And I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, we didn't have watch a lot of TV, but when we would get in the mail that huge Toys R Us like ma uh, catalog, that's how we Christmas shopped. Oh, absolutely. Just flip through and like rip that page. Out, put it in Santa Claus letter yeah, and you like circle it and be like, Santa, this, this is what I want. And I mean, for me growing up, my brother and I were always being babysat by our grandmother who would consistently take us out. Like, that was her thing. She loved spoiling mm -hmm. us and we enjoyed being spoiled. So we would go to places like KB Toys, which some of you older folks around our generation might remember KB Toys. It was the much smaller version. Uh, they would have it in malls and in strip shops. That went defunct years ago. And it seems like Toys R Us might be following in that same path, unfortunately. And it's really sad because, I mean, more and more stores are going under. And I'm, I'm kind of guilty of this. Is I'm Amazon Prime everything. I, I just got a bunch of schoolwork I needed to do. And I order the books and I'll be here tomorrow. And I, I don't go out to go buy it. There's so many of us who do the same thing. That sucks because I'll usually be the like we talked about right. it before. I go in the store, I'm going for the kids section because I'm looking for the Star Wars, the Avengers, mm -hmm. anything. Like I want to see that. So losing an entire store of toys, what other toy store? I mean, we're lucky with Borders because there was Barnes & Noble, but right. it doesn't have the same feel. Right, but there's no other store out there that runs the same sort of deal that Toys R Us does. Mm -hmm. And maybe they've gotten a little too big for their britches. Maybe it's just become this massive structure that can no longer support itself. I mean, I can remember walking through as a kid and we went to specific sections to find the toys that we wanted. And now there's just so much in there. Yeah. I walk through, Rob and I walked through finding a toy for a kid that our friends had. It was her birthday and oh my gosh, I was, I was absolutely overwhelmed. I can only imagine what it's like as an actual parent dragging your child through there going, nope, not nope, yeah. Uh, like, they're just all People over the place. like a mini GameStop in there, yes. really, because there's a huge video game. I went in there a few um, few months back, mm -hmm. and I was like, holy crap, this is not what I remember as a kid, because it did become oh. this giant monster it's that changed. has a lot more. It has a lot more than toys in it, too. So is the change for the better or for the worse? I mean, I don't know that we can really say that, mm -hmm. but what I do know is that there has to be some major changes happening now for the way that they structure themselves if they would like to continue, if they want to remain open, if somebody else wants to swoop mm -hmm. in and pick up where they've left off. But they've been around for so long. I mean, it, you know, again, with things changing, it's it's always going to be the same thing in my yeah. mind. Now. I don't want to grow up because if I did, I wouldn't be a Toys R Us kid. Don't leave us Toys R Us. We're going to miss you. Don't if, do it. Please, please somebody buy them up and please. then just restructure them. Make this work. And also to save a bunch of people's jobs. That too. Holy so, crap. That's a lot of people's jobs to be lost. So Don't hopefully come. somebody out there kind of puts their hands Don't in come. to kind of blow it up and make it a better thing. I don't mm. know. Good luck, Toys R Us. Hey, guys. What's going on? Welcome back to Painted Visions. Glad you could come. Appreciate it. So we're going to go over my top three picks this week. And I... First of all, we'll start at number three and have a very weird one I didn't think I'd ever enjoy as much as I do. But we're going to go with Venomverse number three. The Edge of Venomverse series, eh, it was okay. It was weird little one-shots about different Marvel characters getting the symbiote. They kind of lost me with the Gwynpool issue. They brought me back in with the Robbie Reyes issue. Well, now they're on to the main series of Venomverse. And this book has just been, if you enjoy symbiotes and just crazy over-the-top action, this is what you need to read. Uh, it's got every different character you could imagine wearing a symbiote from different universes you got rocket you got strange you got logan and laura um let's see you got uh steve rogers has got a symbiote so this book has just been really crazy non-stop uh, you got of course deadpool the symbiote and he is now causing problems so in this issue uh, we're looking to see how the symbiotes are trying to survive this invasion of these poison creatures that actually come kind of like a symbiote to the symbiote. Um, in the process, completely digesting the host. Uh, so that person will no longer be there. For some, some reasons that could be a good thing, other reasons a bad thing. So that's what I'm really enjoying. Next, I'm moving on to Kill the Minotaur number four. 
I'm a sucker for Greek mythology. This book has just been over the top, gory and action, and their take on the Minotaur is frightening. Um, normally, I don't think any of those kind of drawings would ever scare me, but this weird bastardization of a monster that the gods have uh, cursed is a very fun read that I highly recommend. But my number one pick this week is going to be Batman the Red Death. I've been reading Dark Knight's Metal, and it's very convoluted. I'm not much of a DC historian, so I'm learning a lot. I don't really know much about the Nth Metal, um, but apparently there's a cop-out metal called the Batmantium uh, that they recently revealed, and that is the final metal to get Batman to get the Dark God of Barbados. Well, this one shot is explaining, in an alternate reality, Bruce took the Speed Force for himself. Uh, that means that Barry doesn't have it, and I can't really go into how, but it's a fun read. But now we have this dark, evil Flash Batman, the Red Death, the Vengeance, and he's about to, this one shot explains his origin, and moving forward, we know more about this character before it comes and wreaks havoc on our current DC universe, and uh, we'll see where the ashes lay when it's all said and done. So come see me this week and pick up my books. We have a lot of people right now. Television. Look at this. Everyone's <laughs> on camera today. Party time. There's a lot of shit on television. There is a lot of shit on There's television. There's too much internet if you're passed out by 11.30 on Sundays. I'm passed out by 9. I'm old. I have not seen a single Rick and Morty on Adult Swim. I've seen oh, it on YouTube. So we're going to lead off with Rick and Morty. Too. Let's Rick talk Rick and Morty, the latest DVR episode. Ring. The latest season's out and they've changed up the writer's room. And I guess people are angry that they've changed up the writer's room because the plot. Is it, is it a more sober writer's they're, room? They're, I don't know, but they're not as smart, apparently. And I still think that the concepts oh. are fucking funny. I don't, and, yeah, I read an article saying that it's just not as uh, sophisticated as they remember. And I'm like, have wait, you wait. been watching this same show? Mr. Poopy Butthole. What? I know. Yeah, sophistication at its finest. Yeah. But um, I, this previous episode, um, we talked about it before, um, well, the episode before, I just liked it a lot better than this episode, current one. Uh, uh, episode 7. Yeah. Where they were, oh, that was, I thought with the season opening, with the whole Council of Ricks being killed, that all the alternate Ricks and Mortys, with a show that talks about infinite timelines and universes, yeah. they, they literally have a planet filled with nothing but Ricks and Mortys from different planets. I thought that they weren't be a factor. Oh, yeah, I was kind of like, this is a fun episode, but it seemed like one of those throwaway episodes, and then at the very end of the credits, I had to rewind it like twice because I was like, did I just see I, an eye patch? Did I see I an eye patch? I forgot the song. The, the, no. uh, the Chaos Chaos instrumental that they yeah. played from season one when Evil evil Morty, who has an eye patch that went away, yeah. ends up like becoming president of that planet. There are ten Ricks running for it, and there's one Morty. But it was great because it really talked about like I don't know. I always think too deep on the show, but it's kind of like how we're living now, how bad like things are in our own society, Oof. and they really reflected it within the cartoon. I'm like, it's like we're in the cartoon. <laughs> I, I I I don't see a decrease in quality. I, I think I see really... an increase on this one, and I'm thinking maybe that the voice helped a little bit, but I don't know. Maybe. But I don't know. But maybe, maybe it's his helped his writing. I think he's got more. Like when you go through something like that, I think that you get more passionate with what you're writing. So with at, divorce. As somebody that doesn't oh, watch okay. the show, okay. could they be maybe trying to push an agenda that people don't appreciate? Maybe. Are they trying to like um, subtly say something and people are like, look, I, keep that I, away? I, I'd say I think every, it's interesting. Every fucking episode, they've got some personal vendetta, their own take on atheism, mm. and you know, Rick is one minute praying to God for help, and then as soon as it goes his favor, oh God, you don't exist. Ha, He's ha, like, ha. fuck you, God. No, I, I would say without a shadow of my doubt, yeah, they're, uh, they've got their own stuff that they're putting. Yeah, it's fine. Fuck I'm it. it's enjoying not, it. But, so we, but once you start it. preaching what you want people to hear, that's when people stop listening. That's They've right. done a decent enough job, I think, balancing between Rick and Morty arguing a point to death that I I don't feel as alienated by it okay. uh, as yeah. other stuff that I've seen out there. Yeah. I know, I, I'm really enjoying this. I think the writers are fantastic. I love the voice actors. I don't know. I'm really enjoying the season. By the I'm seeing a lot of people kind of jabbing at it going, it's not as smart as last oh. season. I'm like, I disagree. But everyone's okay with their opinion even nothing though they're wrong nothing beats fucking <laughs> pickle rick. Wrong. so right. rick and morty's getting a lot of love from us still we're i know continue i continue watching it dig probably it. talk on it again dig we it. talked quite it's a bit tricky. on it dig so it. let's uh, show some other shows some love how about yeah. the tick anybody catching the new tick uh we saw, saw the pilot, the pilot episode yeah, i saw the pilot really I've been liked, seeing it. but then it was a long wait for the rest of it yeah and Amazon Prime. yes uh i've gotten through three episodes of it just because there's too many damn things to watch um but so far really enjoy it I still think that the problem with the new guy, not a problem, new guy does great. Can't yeah. think it was any Compared to Patrick Warburton? Yeah, Patrick Warburton From the original, was, who I loved on the previous. Yes, yeah. I mean, yeah. the yeah. problem yeah. is, is yeah, Patrick Warburton is such a good character actor that yeah. Yeah. 
he hit the tick so well on the head yeah. that there's no other way. It's harder than not. And see like him. I said, the new guy, if we didn't have that previous iteration, he'd be just fine. Yeah. Because he does the big uh, verbose voice in the voice. bosom of justice. I yeah. So him, he though. does. I really do not mind him. You've got the world where it's all like Dark Knight uh, style, but then yeah. you've got some comedy for God's sakes. And yeah, it's 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 still good. But did you watch the cartoon? Really? Um. Probably, I just don't recall. I was just, oh. just going to ask to compare classic. the two. The original oh, classic. Yeah. I think it's still good. Oh, I love Let's Take a Child. Oh, so. okay. I'm not sold on the new Arthur. Too well. Yeah. I mean, but again, I've only seen the pilot like Rob and Brandy. Yeah. But Arthur's not there to be. To, you're not supposed to be sold on Arthur. I don't. I, don't, I feel you kind of. That's you. Where's Arthur Batman? Is, well, Arthur is you. Oh, we haven't. We, not even in the first three. Because I'm. I love Batman. We're not. We, no, the only reason why is because I remember that he's guyliner. You better get Batman. Well. I'll be upset if we don't have Batman. Well, but I well, got. I know. From my understanding, there's only oh, six. Oh, there's six I, episodes, I, and they're going to do another six. Sorry, Amazon, it was only six. I Amazon was, only filmed the, the first half of the, the season. Pilot, Are you serious? The pilot came out a full oh. fucking year before yeah. episode two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I'm we've been waiting a year. I, I saw the pilot, and that was it for a year. And I was like, oh, I, yeah. I we guess were still in California when we. You know, I got to say though that. What Amazon's probably doing is instead of producing a whole twelve issue run, yeah. episode run and it <laughs> failing miserably, well, let's just do a little bit, see how the fans go. Because mm. I mean, yes, we are fickle people. Well, you we know, really this are. reminds me because we're all prepping for New York Comic Con as well. Yeah. Um, I actually got in touch with some of the uh, producers there. Hopefully, we'll be able to chat with the cast um, of the nice. Tick. But they have a whole Tick experience that they're doing at New York Comic Con. Yeah. So I actually I didn't signed tell you guys that. So. Um, cool. Stand by the stand by. We'll have yeah. some of that coverage when we get to New York Comic Con. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh. Yeah. oh shit! So, so what else we got? Tick, uh, uh, Orville. Uh, Orville. Orville. We w talked about the first yes. episode. Yes. So this... there were some people, yeah. and reading a handful of reviews, who actually, I mean, it ran both ways. There were people like, you know what? This is actually better than I thought it was going to yeah. be. And mm. there were people who were expecting something entirely different, and they didn't like it. They were expecting humor that. I personally didn't see, but they still felt like it was typical, you know, Seth, Seth MacFarlane. Yeah. Um, I mean, I was expecting it haters. to be different. And, well, I, I, and that's yeah. how I feel. Yeah, and yeah. I love Seth MacFarlane, but it yeah. was not what I expected when right. I saw it. And I was like, it's not as funny, but I'm still DVRing it and I'm still going to mm -hmm. watch watch it because sure. like we've said before, the first season of Star Trek Next Generation sucked. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's still the greatest, greatest Star Trek ever, in my yeah. opinion. Once I mean, again, I haven't watched it, but working in the store, I still hear people talk about yes. it. Yes. And I keep hearing the same thing. Which is? is it serious trying to be funny or is it funny trying to be serious? Personally, I feel like And it's, from my understanding, the show doesn't even know what it wants to be. I think it's a bit of both because yeah. you get the humor in there, but then you do have these moments where they're talking about real life issues, not fantasy, sci-fi issues, but you know, marital issues and what is it like when you're working Wait, marriage still exists in the future? with a you know, an ex well, not successfully. who has <laughs> cheated on you and he's cheated successful. on you because You've been working long hours and you weren't there for them. I mean, they're they're dealing with real things like serious in a issues. Funny way. I yeah. just want to know what personnel officer would ever assign the ex spouse to be your second in command. That's you know, a, but but but, but it's that's, comical. That's, okay, so it's funny. Too much to stick up <laughs> our ass funny. and looking at it. it, I, it is, it's, it's well done. It's they different than it what I thought. Really yeah. well but done. I actually enjoy it. And what I'm really looking forward to the future is the future and the fact that um, they are apparently having uh, some Star Trek. Appearances. appearances coming through, yeah. which is so, be great. Who do we want to see? Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Of course, you want to see Patrick Stewart, but and that should be the obvious because if he's not a distant relationship, like yeah. he should. I know. Like, he's I like know. her in a red shirt and kill him. Okay. He, he <laughs> yes. it, or give him a goatee. <laughs> yes, but see, oh, they all have to. Yeah, the right a goatee. Yeah. Evil. <laughs> I want to see Michael Dorn, but I want to see oh, him yeah. not in Klingon. Like, yeah, yeah. I want to see him as something else, but doing the typical like wharf voice. So that he is, it's recognizable. I just, I just, I love him. Oh, that just him. made me think because of this last episode, yeah. the wharf looking type character is sitting on an egg right now. Oh shit. Don't, you don't, know, don't make me get my hopes up. Don't make me get my hopes up. You know, some relation there would be very interesting. Oh, that would be absolutely I mean, I just saw at Dragon Con, they had, um, and, and I'm really bad with the names, but we had Diana Troy, Dr. Crusher, Data. We had all these people up there. Brent Spiner. Yeah. Come on, um, guys. Really bad with names, but they were there, uh, and I'm kind of like, Will can we Wheaton. all get? To, he wasn't there, but um, that's that was that, um, that's Wesley Crusher. That yeah, Wesley but I'm, Crusher. I'm saying he wasn't Dragon Con. I'm talking about Dragon Con, but they were all together at Dragon Con, and I was like, now get them all together and put them on Orville. 
Okay. I think that was yeah, absolutely hysterical. Just did you know, we're, we're, we're pulling our nerd cards out. Oh, like, yeah. hold on. But no, but you were just like, yeah, Wesley Crusher's there. He said, Will Wheaton. You're like, no, no, Will Wheaton. No, I was saying he wasn't a dragon car. And oh my God, Pat's just trying to be a butt. It's okay, Pat. I, I didn't you. hear Wesley. But I couldn't remember the name of Deanna Choi. Who's Deanna Choi? I was supposed to interview her not too long ago. Would you like me to look it up for you? No, I'm, I'm oh. See, he's throwing out. out nerd cards and he doesn't know either. I couldn't remember her name. I'm failing right now, but it's okay. Hey, I never watched TNG, so. <gasps> What? Oh no! That, that, that yeah, I watch Star Wars. Wars. I enjoy Star Wars. Okay, okay. Oh my God. all right. Then. Sorry. What grew, the hell? You grew up yeah, at my, my grandmother's grew, my house. Was TNG guy. We that. never really had much at grandma's house, but we had basic channels like three, fifteen, ten, whatever. So like, I grew up. We would watch, you know, cartoons in the morning, followed by Bob Ross, Soul Train, and then Star Trek: The Next Generation. Like that's what it was. So. You had good family. Uh, I'm a little, I'm a little. You know, I, I didn't realize what it is. My mom was a huge Star Trek head, and mm -hmm. that was the moment of the day where, all right, you go to bed now. Why? Star Trek's on. But oh. so it was more of a punishment time for me because oh. I wasn't allowed to interact with the family. Just out of a question. Oh. Do you think Orville sure will surpass scene. Galaxy Quest as the best parody of Star Trek? I don't know because. Or is that still left uh, to be judged? I don't know. Galaxy no, Quest no, is, a, is a movie. It's like, a movie. Like, it's but it's really a parody off of Star Trek. But yes. I mean, it's hard to compare a series but, that's going to be able to develop throughout, mo hopefully, months and years. Yeah. And also, you can't really stand compete alone. with the Galaxy Quest Because Alan Rickman, he's right. It's Alan Rickman. Sigourney Weaver. It was just yeah. a question. You're wrong. Who, <laughs> will, 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 it be a pin, will, will it surpass that as it was the a bad question. representation of a parody? It was a bad question. I, mean, uh, I think it's apples and oranges. Uh, Personally, I think it's apples and oranges. All right. Well, then I'll speed it along. Last, what is last real quick, upcoming on TV, The Gifted. Okay. On Fox, X Men. It's Fox just old concedes Fox the mutants franchise. back. Just, just give the mutants back to. How do we feel about that? Stop it, Fox. Um, the only thing I have there. to say is I gave up on Legion. It yeah, was good, I but I gave up on it. Oh, okay. And I kind of feel the same for this. I just don't. I feel like they're it feels trying forced? to. It yes. doesn't. Yeah, it feels forced, yes. and also it feels like mm. these TV shows aren't made. They, they're trying to make it fit the TV format, and I think the TV format it needs to go the way of the dodo. They're trying to compete yeah. with Netflix and these other, uh, you know, channels that have their own thing going. And they're trying to I keep don't a license. license. Are you going to tune into the first episode? Yes. All right. I don't know. I'll give it a shot. So be quiet, nerds. We're going to tune in. The right. of New York. Verdict Home. left yeah. to be announced on that. Yeah. All right. All right. To so be a lot of crap. Hey guys, my top three picks are a little diverse this week, so I hope you roll with me and see what I've got for you. The first one was something that actually wasn't even on my radar until I walked into the shop today because the comic list that comes out every week is so long that it's really easy to skip over something. And Adam happened to go, oh, was this one of your picks today? And I was like, no, oh my god, yes, that's going to be one of my picks. And I had to look it up and see what was going on because it is Wonder Woman and Conan. Oh my gosh, let me see. I think it was over here. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull this up for you right now. You see this beauty right here? Super excited about this. It's really interesting. I love when uh, creators basically take two groups that are already canon in their own rights and bring them together. For those of you who don't know what Conan is, Conan is a barbarian. He, uh, you know, just... He's the barbarian! He is the barbarian! Um, I'm, I'm actually part of a, a Conan group at Dragon Con that does a lot of photo shoot stuff and just a lot of amazing people. Um, but Conan is a really fun read and Wonder Woman obviously being the badass that she is, I just I think this is going to be a really amazing one so I'm actually picking this up today because I am super stoked about it. Um, I, 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 I don't even know what else to say about this. I'm just, I'm super excited. Um, my second pick for the day is going to be Batwoman 7. It's Marguerite Bennett. So basically, Kate Kane, her dad, who is um, Colonel Jacob Kane, has kind of realized that she's not going to be the soldier that he wants her to be. And so he has taken away the paramilitary group that she was leading and handed control of that over to somebody else. Um, who goes by Colony Prime, and this guy does not get along with Kate whatsoever. And so basically this is the beginning of what they call Fear and Loathing, which is a play, I guess, off of Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. If you haven't seen that movie, it is bizarre as all shit. Um, kind of terrifying and super trippy, but that makes sense for what's going on right now because Kate and Colony Prime have found themselves stranded in the Sahara Desert, and heavily dosed up on scarecrow's uh, toxins. 
So basically they're kind of having to figure out how they're going to get out of this situation. Are they going to rely on each other or are they just going to sit down and murder the hell out of one another? Um, the cover for this is absolutely terrifying. It's one of those where you kind of look at it and go, ooh, ooh, I don't think I want to look at that anymore. That's a little much for me. Um, so that's pick number two. And then my third pick is a little interesting. It's called Angelic. It's Angelic number one. Um, and it, trying to figure out how to describe this for you guys. Basically, it's in a world in the future where you have all of these lab animals that over eons have been abused and mistreated and forgotten and they've been genetically modified. And so now they basically have these lives of their own. And so their lives consist of, you know, flying monkeys, you know, having to basically lose their wings, settle down. And Cora, Q-O-R-A is how you spell that, has decided that that's not what she wants. She doesn't want to settle down. She doesn't want to lose what makes her who she is. She wants to go out and explore. And it's, it's essentially about teenage rebellion and living life and being able to do things for yourself. So I'm actually really interested in this one. I think it's something different. I think it's something that we haven't seen quite yet. So super stoked about it. And those guys are my top picks. All right, guys, so that's our show. I mean, we've talked from things from our Port Toys R Us going away to shows that are coming up to our favorite picks. I mean, we talked about a lot other yeah. than the hurricanes. I mean, we should yeah. probably talk about that. But Hurricanes, earthquakes, fires, oh my. Yeah. Seriously, right? guys, what the hell is going on with the world? I know. So much destruction, so much awful things. So let's end this on a really awesome note. We're going to bring Patrick in right now. Yep. He's going to talk to you about some pretty sweet stuff going on. What you got for us, Patrick? All right, guys. Again, thank you for tuning in. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. We've got a lot of things going on, and you're going to want to do that because of the amount of things we have mm -hmm. coming up. Like I said earlier, mm -hmm. New York Comic Con, but this weekend is Baltimore Comic Con. It's going to be a really good time. Brandy's going to be in the house with me. Rob's going to be in the house with me. We're going to get a lot of fun interviews. Um, I think already off the top, I said last episode, we're talking to Run DMC's mm -hmm. Daryl McDaniel's DMC, the devastating, devastating Mike Controller. Been doing all my research already <laughs> on all the different things about him, but he's been a legend and mm -hmm. we're talking to a legend, y'all. Going to speak with him. That's going on this weekend. So if you're in Baltimore, come check that out. As well as on Saturday night, Saturday night, is the uh, first official Ringo Awards. It takes over for, yes. was it the Kubert Awards? Harvey. Harvey Always. Awards. Harvey Awards, I'm getting my people mixed up, these legends mixed up, but Mike Ringo, the Ringo Awards is gonna occur. Um, I'll be in the house um, at DMC's table, actually. Oh, look at you. So, so uh, it's gonna be a good time. I'll be able to have dinner and talk to a legend and meet some other great folks. So stay tuned to that, and as the awards uh, happen, I'm going to uh, tw tweet out the winners. Awesome. So follow us on Twitter, oh, yeah. at the NRW, so you can get the live tweets on who is winning what award at the Ringo Awards. Okay. So that's really cool. Other awesome news that came out this week that we didn't cover already. Um, one of my favorite films of the year on Blu-ray DVD, Wonder Woman oh, is oh, out. Go pick that up, okay. show that love, so that way we can get more awesome led female-led superhero yes. films. You know, we killed it in the theaters. Let's get the DVD sales Why didn't uh, we talk about this popping before? off. We yeah. had <laughs> post credit scene too. Also in oh, theaters yeah. this weekend, if you are if you want to go out to theaters and not just watch uh, Wonder Woman at home, Kingsman the Golden Circle is mm -hmm. out. Another great uh, comic adaptation. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. And we've been promoting it uh, since last episode. Le the Lego Ninjago, Ninjago, if you have kids. Yes. Um, our contest is yes. still occurring right now. Lego Ninjago build 2017 hashtag. You know, get your Lego inspired build together and we're gonna get a prize pack from our friends at Warner Brothers. We have a bunch of shares on the Facebook, so go check out the yeah. Facebook Please so you can do. see the hashtags and everything, guys. Good stuff. And uh we're here at Painted Visions. I don't know if you noticed yeah, that this week. Beautiful. Beautiful. Seriously, it just it emanates so cool. all the comics. Our favorite store beautiful. in Woodbridge, Virginia, led by our man Adam Martin. He's the store manager here. Shout out to Adam for appearing on the show again this week. Thanks, um Bob. we are gonna be working with Painted Visions as well as their sister shop, the amazing comic shop in Fairfax, Virginia. It's just the okay comic. <laughs> okay. They're family. Um, <laughs> Batman Day occurs every year with DC Comics, although this year the girls are taking over. Mm -hmm. Harley Quinn is going to take over Batman Day. And September 23rd, which is this weekend, that's going to be Batman Day everywhere else in the world, but because Baltimore Comic Con is occurring yeah. and we're going to be busy at Baltimore Comic Con, 
you know, we kind of know some things. We know some people. We've talked to Painted and we talked to Amazing to move their Batman Day to September 30th, next weekend. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be in the house. We're going to be celebrating Batman Day here at Painted Visions. We'll hope you'll turn out. We have a cosplay contest planned, some other fun games and some entertainment occurring. I'll be bringing my uh, little one dressed in her Harley Quinn. She was like, I want to come out to Batman Day. She had such a great time last time. So she's doing the Harley Quinn appropriate costume of the DC Hoop Superhero Girls version. Oh, that's exciting. So, I love those. Those are precious. If it, if it isn't that one, then it's the animated, but she's definitely not doing Suicide Squad. Oh, I was going to so, say, I think she's That's not like daddy approved. That's that's no. proper those parents, shorts no. are not approved by any daddy. <laughs> no. Although we like, you know, you know anyway, they're I'm approved gonna by some daddies. Thirst, <laughs> I'm going to put the thirst away. I'm going to put the thirst like away. But not like that. So a lot of good stuff going on. Shout out to our friends at Painted Visions. If you want to know when the event's occurring, look at our events tab on the NRW page. And again, follow us on Twitter because mm -hmm. everything bleeds to each other. Our YouTube, we have our Dragon Con review um, posted up that we talked yeah. about in the last episode, yep. but it's, it's now separate on its own on the channel where I added some awesome pictures and video okay. from Liz. Yes. You didn't send me anything. I sent you I just want to make you awesome. focus, but I, I put them all on there. It's all good. Sorry. She was so busy partying it up. It wasn't a lot, but I got some really cool robots. So check videos. out some of Liz's awesome footage on that uh, particular video, and just a lot of good stuff is going to be coming to the channel. We're working hard to deliver content to you guys. Yeah. So, you know, it's coming up. Check us out. Follow, like, subscribe. All right. That's me. See you next week, <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye, y'all.